Good day viewers, my name is Dalen Sinokoka and I welcome you to Dell with Electrical YouTube channel. Today we shall be discussing extensively on how to understand the vector group of a transformer. If this is your first time of visiting my channel, kindly click on the subscribe button and subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on the notification icon to get notified when subsequent videos will be posted on our channel. Now, the vector group is an International Electrotechnical Commission's method of classifying the high voltage windings and low voltage windings of a three-phase equipment, mostly a transformer. The configuration of a transformer has both the low voltage and high voltage windings. And the way in which these configurations are being wounded together will determine whenever you connect them in parallel if there is going to be an overlap of voltage that will lead to high current that might damage your equipment. The phase difference too of the equipment. So if you see the phase difference between the low voltage and high voltage windings, that difference in phase, you must take that into consideration. Sometimes 30 degrees, sometimes 60 degrees, but it must be taken into consideration so that whenever you are using the equipment subsequently, you will, be able, you will know that, okay, I'm in the right position to use this equipment. Now in your transformer, we normally have the nameplate and the nameplate of this transformer is being represented with symbols so if you don't understand what those symbols actually mean you might not be able to know what vector group what the vector group configuration is so in the IEC IEC 6076-1 that is the standard that talked about the vector group configuration of the transformer so let's look at what the symbols in that vector group configuration signifies and what they mean. So in the nameplate of a transformer, you must have seen something like, like this. If you look at it on my screen, you see something like DYN1 or DYN11 or YND1, YND11. All these are the different configurations we have on the transformer nameplate. Now, when you have the capital Y or small letter Y, it means that this transformer winding is connected in star. Capital Y signifies the high voltage winding. The small letter Y signifies the low voltage winding. And it means that Y means star or Y connection. Then when you see D, capital letter D or small letter D, it means delta connection. If it's capital letter D, it means that the high voltage winding is delta connected. If it's small letter D, it means that the low voltage winding is delta connected then n or capital letter n or small letter n that means is the neutral of the high voltage side capital n then low voltage side small letter n so these are the winding configurations that we have within our um, within the nameplate of the equipment so if we want to understand basically how this operates we you don't have any issues at all because you know that these symbols are normally in tantum with what you want. We want to see how a transformer is connected both in delta connection and in star connection. When you do this to paru paru you will be able to understand the vector group of both systems. So we'll go into the delta, the star connection. Then later on, we'll go into the delta connection. Now, for the de for the delta connection or for the star connection the phase shift is very important the phase shift is very important we are going to be using the clock sign your clock now look at my screen here if you look at my screen you see this is 12 o'clock this is 1 o'clock this is 11 o'clock and this is 6 is in 6 o'clock so now when it's in 12 o'clock the phase shift of 12 o'clock is 0 that means the there is no phase shift between the low voltage winding and the high voltage winding they, 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 they don't have any phase shift. Now, if you look at it from 12 to 1, it has been stipulated standardly that it's 30 degrees. That means the total clock symbol is 360 degrees. That's from 12 to 1, 1 to 2, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, down to 12, which is 360. Now, if you, if you have the phase shift, the significant phase shift means that you are shifting in the clockwise direction is negative. When you are shifting in the clockwise direction, you are moving negatively. But when you are shifting in anti-clockwise direction, you are moving positively. That is why when you are on 1 o'clock, the phase shift is minus 30 degrees. When you are in 11 o'clock, it means that 
you are in plus 30 degrees phase shift but notice it this 11 now can also be seen as 330 why because here is 180 here is 270 here is 300 here is 330 so 11 can be seen as um, low voltage lagging high voltage by 330 degree or low voltage leading high voltage by 30 degree because it's moving anti-clockwise then this is what 180 degree phase shift now you should understand this movement because if you don't understand this movement at this level you would not be able to understand the vector diagram that we are going to be doing so now your clock is the symbol of movement so you should have the clock at the tip of your finger on your fingertip and be able to understand how it operates one hour movement is 30 degrees from 12 o'clock so if you are moving from 12 to 6 180 degree if you are moving from 12 to 3 you are moving 90 degree i guess that is clear so majorly the face the face of a transformer is divided into four main groups group one is zero degree so when it's when it's zero degree that means your the clock sign is on 12 o'clock so when your when your clock is 12 o'clock it means that there are only two major connections you can connect on 12 o'clock either delta delta or star star you can see that on your screen then for group two group two is usually 180 degree that is on six o'clock so on six o'clock what you can also have is delta delta connection or star connection on group three we have minus 30 degree or one o'clock or minus 30 degree that means it has moved from 12 to 1 in the clockwise direction that is minus 30 degree so in that case it can either be star delta connection or delta star connection then on group 4 is plus 30 degree or 11 o'clock so when i say 11 o'clock you are seeing that it's moving anti-clockwise from 12 to 11 so it's 30 degree so it's, that can also be a star delta connection or a delta star connection so these things are very important in our discussion on vectors of a transformer because it, the technicality would would trigger if you don't understand these basics so what we have said now is the clock we've talked about the clock we've talked about the delta and the star connection so please notice that if you don't understand the vector group and two transformers are connected in parallel that phase difference will exist so when that phase difference now exists you might not understand how the circulation of current will grow so you see a large current flowing between the two windings and it might damage your transformer so that is why you need to vividly understand what you are working with and be able to work with it we would now see the star connection so i've told you earlier that we're going to be talking about the star connection and the delta connection so on the star connection we have six connections six great connections that we're going to do six of them on the star on the star connection so all right on the screen now you are going to see that the first method or to connect a star or wire connected one is is y0 or yn0 y0 means 12 o'clock if you look at this clock now you see that the clock is 12 you can see the hour sign there showing 12 o'clock now look at this diagram you see this diagram this is how a star connected winding is so the a b and c shows that a is the core of a b is the core of b c is the core of c now look at the windings the windings is the only one that changes the core is constant when you see a transformer the red the red the yellow and the blue those bushes they are constant those bushes are connected to the cores of the transformer so you can see that the a b and c they are constant in their location but so if you see the direction now on the clock you see the the hour angle is showing on 12 which is your core is on 12 you see the winding too this is second arrow here is showing on 12 the winding two is showing on 12 so when you incorporate them together you see that your a and your w1 are together i don't know if you if that is understood so now when you want to draw that you will see that from the above diagram you will show it, it shows that this is how it was your a and your w1 are together your b and your w2 will also will be together your c and your w3 will be together so what you normally call when you draw your transformer 
you see that you draw a transformer like this so this is the, the part the, the positive part or the polarity we call them polarity side is a then the non-polarity side is the is this other part you know transformer when you it has a winding so when it has that winding a the, a, the polarity side is connected look at it now this is your winding this part where the arrow is showing is the polarity side the the bottom part is the non-polarity side if you look at this now the polarity side is connected to a the non-polarity side is connected to the neutral for winding two the polarity is connected to b the non-polarity this is the winding the non-polarity is connected to the neutral for winding three the polarity is connected to c the non-polarity is connected to the neutral so you can draw this now by yourself first of all you know, where, the way you have to do you draw this transformer the windings first one two three so you see that the, the polarity of w1 is connected to a so from this this is your w1 the polarity is connected to a this is your w2 the polarity is connected to b this is your polarity is connected to b this is your w3 the polarity is connected to c this is your w3 the polarity is connected to c but look at them the non-polarity side this is the bottom part they are connected to neutral that is why this this is the non-polarity side of a the non-polarity side of b the non-polarity side of c they are all connected to neutral i guess this is perfectly understood so we'll go to the next one which is y4 this y4 shows that the winding is facing four o'clock look at your clock here you see this is four o'clock this is the core the core is in 12 the the winding is in four o'clock so you can draw that by yourself you can see now that this is your core a but your winding is four o'clock and the angle between them is 120 because 30 30 from 12 to 1 is 30 1 to 2 60 2 to 3 90 3 to 4 120 that is why it's 120 degrees apart if you look at the way we are going to draw it now you see the the arrow the arrow of w1 is showing that it's slanty and if you look at this shape of this slant which of this star connection is it related to you could see that it's related to the b that is to show you that the wind, the polarity side of a uh, winding of winding w1 is connected to b so the moment you have started with w1 it must move in that clockwise direction so this is w1 this is also w2 this is also w3 so this, since you have understood where w1 is w1 is facing b so you should you, you can look at it here w1 is facing b therefore w2 will face c w3 will face a do you get it now so you can see that w1 the polarity of w3 is connected to a the polarity of w1 is connected to b the polarity of w2 is connected to c so how do we draw that if you draw your windings your, this is your w1 w2 w3 the polarity of w1 is connected to b look at it the polarity of w1 is connected to b the polarity of w2 is connected to c this is the this is polarity of w2 is connected to c the polarity of w3 is connected to a the polarity and the polarity of w3 is connected to a why the bottom or the non-polarity part of the three are connected to a midpoint this is a neutral point so you loop all the three together so if there's a neutral bar you can bring this one out and get your end that is for y4 i guess you understand this now so this is our y8 it y8 shows eight o'clock if you see on your eight o'clock this means that the winding is in eight o'clock this is where your eight o'clock is it shows that it's 180 degrees so if you look at the location of this winding how is it like this location of winding is showing that it's connected to c so your w1 will be in c this is your w1 w1 is in c w2 is in a w3 is in b so by the time you look you look you look at all this together you see that the winding of this is connected to c so w1 this is our w1 the one the windings of the, pol the polarity side is connected to c for w2 the polarity is connected to b look at it for our w2 the polarity is connected to a then our w3 the polarity is connected to b why the non-polarity side are all looped 
I hope this is understood. Then we'll, let's check out Y6. Y6 shows that it's in 6 o'clock. In 6 o'clock, this is how the core is A, while the one is, is W1. They are 180 degrees apart. So in that case, the windings become, if you look at how it is, W1 is, in, is facing down 6 o'clock. You can see that W1 is facing down. So if W1 is facing down, that means W22 will face down. That means W3 will face down. They are all meeting at the point. So what is this saying? That the polarity side of the windings are all connected to neutral. This is the polarity side, connected to the polarity side of this of W2 connected to the polarity side of W3. Then the non-polarity side of W1 is connected to A. The non-polarity side of W1 is connected to A. The non-polarity side of W2 is connected to B. The non-polarity side of W2 is connected to B. The non-polarity side of W3 is connected to C. Non-polarity side is connected. So this is the vector diagram of Y6. Then we'll go to Y10. That is 10 o'clock. If you see that your 10 o'clock, this is how 10 o'clock is on the clock. If you see this arrow now, there are 60 degrees apart. If you see this arrow, this arrow resembles B. That means your B, your W1 will be in B, meaning that the polarity side is facing the neutral point, while the non-polarity side is facing the B. So you bring this your W1 and superimpose it on your B. When you superimpose it on your B, you will get this. So your W1 now is, is, is you have it in B. So that means your W2 will be in C, your W3 will be in A. So if you look at it very well, your W1, all the polarity side are connected to the neutral. Look at it, this is polarity side of this, it's connected to the polarity side of this, it's connected to the polarity side of W3. While the non-polarity side of W1 is connected to B. Non-polarity side of W1 is connected to B. Non-polarity side of W2 is connected to C. Non-polarity side of W2 is connected to core of C. While non-polarity side of W3 is connected to A, non-polarity side of W3 is connected to A. So you see that this is how you draw your vector diagram. Then the last one on the star connection is Y2. That is 2 o'clock. If you look at your 2 o'clock very well, you will see that the winding is facing 2. You see the winding is facing 2. So which of the diagram shows winding facing 2, which is C. So you superimpose this diagram on C and draw. When you superimpose it on C and draw, see this is your W1. Your W1 is on C, W2 is on B, on A, W3 is on B. Always indicate how the arrow is going. You see this arrow is going to the neutral position of it. So your diagram shows the same thing that all the polarity sides are looped to, together to the neutral point. This is the polarity of W1. This is the polarity of W2. This is the polarity of W3, they are all looped together. The non-polarity of W1 is connected to C. This is W1. The non-polarity side is now connected to C. The non-polarity side of W2 is connected to A. The non-polarity side of W2 is connected to A. Then the non-polarity side of W3 is connected to B. The non-polarity side of W3 is connected to B. So this is how you draw your vector diagram. So I believe you've understood the star connection of connection of your windings. So in our next video, we'll be talking extensively on the delta connection. We'll be able to see how the delta connection is in respect to your clock. So if you don't understand this winding between now and our next video, please try and understand the star winding. And if there are any question you don't understand, kindly put it on the comment section and we'll be glad to respond to your questions. If this video has been very useful to you, kindly click on the subscribe button to subscribe to our channel or click on the notification icon so as to get notified when subsequent educative videos are being posted. Thank you very much. <music>